Today on Talkie Walkie, very special guest, very special guest. We are talking with drag queen extraordinaire. Not only that, he's actually, I've actually known this guy for years and years and years. We went to high school together. Give it up for Jackie Cox. Hi. Yeah. Welcome to beautiful Midtown. It, we are walking down Fort West 40th. Yeah. Did you say 40th, right? Yeah. 40th, and we are uh, gonna go into Hell's Kitchen. That's right. See what, and do you live in this area? I do, from the streets of Hell's Kitchen right to the runway. I was not lying in my rapping. You, what do you mean you're rapping? On Drag Race, I rapped. You did? Yeah. Now, I tried to watch some- By under, the way, I, I, I heard the Wisconsin come right out when you said drag. It I, was incredible. Okay, so it's bag and drag. Yeah, drag. I, I still can't say words correctly. No, you say, you say them just, Wisconsinably. It's not good because I should, you know, I'm on stage a lot. I should need to, I should be able to pronounce the words that I'm saying. I say go with the Midwestern accent. I think people, drag, drag. people so wait, should know drag? your story. Wait, wait, so wait, drag? Is that how you say it? You say drag. 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 Like drag. Drag. It's not, it's, that's actually like, it's hard for me to say that. I know. You want to say drag. Drag. Big. Big Minnesota. Yeah. Milwaukee. Wait, how do you pronounce the thing that you put your head on when you go to sleep? Pillow. Oh, that's pretty good. What, wait, what? I've heard some people from Wisconsin say pillow. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> no! Yeah, I've heard that, that one too. That they're saying Let's wrong. Let's go this we're going way. this way. Okay. Yeah. That they're saying wrong. Taking so, you on a twirl of Hell's Kitchen. I love it. So now we're walking down, what is this, 10th Ave? Or we're on 9th. 9th. We're on 9th. When people meet you for the first time, yeah. what do you say? that you do for a living? Like, how do you, like, oh, do you I just- Oh, I tell them I'm a drag yeah. queen. Okay. Um, drag performer. I also still, like, do some acting. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, and I think, it, depending who the people are, some people have no idea what drag is still, which I'm like, where you been? But right. if you have no idea what drag is, like, it's an art form that involves, you know, exaggerated, kind of gendered performance. My drag character is very, Embraces all my feminine qualities. She's very high femme. Jackie is kind of a creation of my own mind. Um, we're gonna go this way. And she's, you know, she's like, I, I say she's like your fun aunt. Okay. So that's, that's what I kind of say. Everyone tell has a fun aunt, so that makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah, they're like, oh, you're the that girl. Mm hmm. Yeah, so that's, that's how I kind of like introduce Jackie. Um, but yeah, it's, it's something fun. I've been doing it now for 13 years. Wow. Yeah. 2010. Now, how for the do you first time. how do you come up with I'm gonna try to say this right a drag yeah the persona how do you like it, how did you invent Jackie Cox and did it take you a while did you have to did you go oh my God, through the way you said Cox oh my Cox. God <laughs> I can't I love it like you can take the boy out of Wisconsin but you can't take the Wisconsin out of the boy I think that's amazing um, but do you but do, did you go through different incarnations of characters that just didn't hit the mark you weren't feeling it. Like, how do you, Yeah. how did you like decide to be like, I'm Jackie By the way, Cox. this is my gay gym. That we're this here, is here right we are. Here? Look, at, look at the rainbows. You see them? There they are. Look at that, rainbows here, unicorns. This is really where you work out? Yeah, it's called Mark Fisher Fitness. Super gay, super gay. It looks so fun. So fun, I may be oh. going to work out there right after this. All right, all right. Yeah. Well, you don't need to, you look like you're in great shape. You know, I'm doing my best out here. We're, we're in our, somewhere in our 30s. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, I'm in my North 30s now, that is scary. Yeah, yeah, I guess same. Jackie's kind of like this like creation that I made up of like a drag character, but not everyone like makes their drag persona like a real differentiated character from who they are in their day-to-day -day life. Right. I'd say when I first started doing drag, like she was very much like this like creation of my mind and like almost like a Miranda Sings type character. Oh, okay. Shout out to Miranda Sings, who I do love. Yeah, Colleen's great. Um, not like quite like her, but kind of just this like exaggerated performer persona uh -huh. and like you know it's been 13 years and now she's somewhere much closer to who I am every day and I think doing drag race because it's a reality show you see us so much out of drag that it all kind of doesn't blend together but especially for my audience they know me out of drag a lot now too so now I'm like way more comfortable just being myself and I think ja Jackie is like some of the best parts of the real me. Oh wow is that so you yeah you're almost selling two different personas when you're selling the whole baby I'm selling the whole experience so do people call you so your your, your legal name is not Jackie Cox. it's not it's Darius you know me Darius. As Darius yeah I met you god we were like 13 years old or something yeah 
Yeah, we, we met in like summer theater camp in Shorewood, Wisconsin. That's right. That's right. Now, because people might like when I tell my friends, because there's some friends of mine that I know like know who you are. I'm like, oh yeah, I know, I know Jackie Cox. So, like, how do you know Jackie Cox, man? And I'm like, we grew, we were, we grew up together. Like, yeah, what? we were, we were little kids in Wisconsin. Yeah. Uh, you know, I moved all over as a kid. You I moved did to Wisconsin when I was. 12 and then I left when I was 15. Okay. Um, so, but those were like some really formative years. I think we had eighth grade, freshman, and sophomore year together. Yeah. And then, uh, wait, and then by the end of sophomore year, didn't your dad become principal? He became principal sophomore year. Yeah. So that's when I started getting all the leads and all the musicals. No, you were very talented. Mostly because of my dad, though. No, you are. You can sing. I can't. And dance. No, I can't sing. You can I sing. I cannot sing. You're tall. I'm tall. I'm tall. Yeah. And I'm the guy in drama in Wisconsin, which was all you needed to to be to get any roles. Yeah, I remember. You, you could move. You could dance. I could dance. I could. I could pop and lock yeah, a bit. You used to, didn't you? Used to have the like the Wade Robson like boy band choreography video. Are you telling me you forgot Darren's dance grooves? Darren's dance grooves. You've forgotten. Darren's dance crew. So sorry, Darren. Fame has changed you. I know. I'm so sorry, Darren. It's uh, my bad. Um, yeah. No. I still even look at YouTube tutorials to figure out how to do all the all the, the classic dances because I'm not very it's good amazing. at that anymore. I used to be better. Well, but, you know, the joints get a little rickety. Yeah, they, they totally do. So yeah, I first moved in the financial district when I first moved oh, here. Oh, I don't really love that. Do no, you, eh, it's not great. I, it was just my friend had an apartment there, and it was like. It was literally a one bedroom that he like chopped up the like bedroom into like these like tiny three little tiny rooms. It was yeah. crazy, but yeah, we, I, my main room was like I don't know as wide as my arms and like as deep as a bed. Tight. It's very tight. 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 It's very tight. Um. So then I moved to the Upper West Side, like upper like ninety something, um, and I lived in a tiny again a tiny little shoebox room. Yeah. And then I left New York. I pursued a whole different career. What, what did you do? Um, I pursued like corporate retail. I was a buyer for a Gap. What? I know my life's so random. That's crazy. Yeah. Wait, how did you get the? How did you even get that job? I I worked started working at Gap uh, right after I graduated high school. Uh huh. And I got a job, literally in like the store. Just doing retail? Yeah, like folding clothes. Uh huh. And then when I moved here, I had already worked my way up to being like a manager. Uh huh. And they were doing like this corporate recruiting thing. They were like taking people from the stores and taking them to San Francisco to like learn how to like deal with the corporate stuff. Wow. So I went to San Francisco and that's where I met my partner who I've been with now for uh, I guess 12 years. Wow. And uh, then we both wanted to move back here. So we moved back to New York and we got this apartment house kitchen because I was like, I want to be by the gays. Cause yeah. We're both gay. Oh, nice. Me and my male partner are both gay. I don't know. That's you, weird. Isn't that crazy? Doesn't like, it just cancel out then? Yeah. Yeah. You know, you never know. All right. Keep, each their own. Just keep your options open, man, you know? That's how I live my life. That's, that's all I would say to that. Yeah. So you've been back in New York for how long then? 10 years. Wow. Yeah, actually, we just started the 10th uh, like lease. We've been 10 years and we've been in our same wow. apartment here in the streets of Hell's Kitchen. I'm celebrating my 19 year New York City anniversary, August 30th. Whoa, did you move here like right after high school? Well, I took a year off after high school uh -huh. because I really wanted to- uh, Juggling around the world. Yeah, I really wanted to be a professional juggler and I was. And you my, were so good. Thank you, but I, so I, I, um, I, uh, I trained a year off after high school thinking I was, thinking I didn't need college, I could just juggle full time. Yeah. And then I was like, no, I need college. Or I need, I need, because I wasn't getting the work. I thought, I thought the work was just gonna come to me. Sure. I was a little naive, I guess. But the, with the two songs, whenever I hear them, I think of you still are, um, around the world. Yeah, yeah, the Daft Punk song. Yeah. Around the, the world. world. We don't, that's all we can sing. We don't yep. have the rights. Sorry. And the other one is uh, Bombs Over Baghdad. Oh, Outcast. Okay. So there was a talent show at our high school called yeah. Showcase, and I juggled to both those songs. And uh, one that, of them was the in the dark, yeah, and the was, balls lit up. That's right. I juggled to like the 2001 Space Odyssey, and I thought that guy was gonna hit us. So he was coming right towards us. And um, streets are just suggestions here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and then I, then the lights went out, and then Daft Punk came on. It was like, yeah. 
Nice. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that was uh, I loved I loved Showcase because yeah, it was it was it was great. Yeah, I think I sang Oh What a Beautiful Morning from Oklahoma. I think you did. I think I did. Why? I'm sure like, we have. To hear I think that I probably song. have that on DVD somewhere. You don't. I'm sure I do. All right. Well, what if, if I we do insert footage here? Yeah. Well, I actually know I have footage of you. You were in Joseph. Where? Wait, wait. No, not jo what musical did you do? I did Damn Yankees with Dam you. Yes, Damn Yankees. We were in together. And uh, what was you the weren't next one? in your good man Charlie Brown with me. No. No, didn't get in that one. Damn Yankees. And then did you do Candide with me? No. I think just Damn Yankees then. Wait, Candide would have been senior year though, right? No, Candide was my sophomore oh, year. Oh, okay. Think. But we were in the same grade, right? Oh, three? Yeah. yeah. So wait, Candide would have been. Freshman or sophomore year? Because I was there for it. Okay, okay. Yeah. I want to say it was sophomore year. Yeah, I think it was sophomore year. I didn't do Candide. I dropped out of Candide. I was like, there's nothing here for me. It was like an opera. I loved it. Oh, it's a good show. I just can't. Can't do it. No, I'm, you know, my, I, don't, I don't have a range. But look, you're look 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 now. Yeah, I still I don't I don't know. I, I still can't do candies. You know, I I I never say can't. You could do anything. Yeah, you can. You could. I could do my version of candy. You can, yeah, which, yeah. Which would be which would be fun. We'll cut away to that next if you if you want to record that, like the share version of candy where you play all the parts. So I have to say, drag performances. Yeah. They look so fun. I've been to a few drag shows before. Um, I went to Lance Bass's club. Oh, bar, Rocco's. Rocco's, yeah. yeah. And that was fun. And um, I've done uh, maybe like a few like dra drag karaoke's or, and stuff like that. Sure. But I'm always a spectator. Okay, uh -huh. I've never done drag. Yeah. Are there any straight guys that do drag? Or is, I mean, it's mostly a, a, a gay men's world. Well, drag is for anyone who wants to do it. That's what I think. Um, anyone who wants to do drag should be able to do drag. Um, do you know any straight guys that do it? Uh, Maddie Morphosis, who was on uh, season 14 of RuPaul's Drag Race, uh -huh. uh, is a straight guy. Wow. And yeah, he does. It just seems fun. Drag. Like I'd like to try it. Um, there's a lot of non-gay men who do drag, uh -huh. uh, like uh, a lot of uh, women, tr trans men do drag, trans women do drag. Like, sure. There's all... All so it's very inclusive. Very inclusive. Drag is for everyone. Right. Um, it's just you being able to express yourself in a cool, fun way. What do you think my drag name would be? Ooh, okay. Because you have, does it, like, yeah, how do you pick your drag name? I it guess. It could be whatever you want. Oh, okay. I mean, I think it might be cool if you went by Monroe Marcus. Ooh. Like, or could, could there be a thing on, like, Marilyn Monroe, like a play on that? Yeah, like Marcus Alin. Oh, uh, because there's a lot of puns. Like drag, drag's pretty funny at times, yeah. right? Like, do you, when you're putting together your show, uh huh. And so, like, wait. First of all, do you do like an hour show? Like, if I book Jackie Cox for an event, like, what? You can. Yeah, I, I, I do my own cabaret shows that are like an hour long. Okay. Kind of a, kind of a deal. Uh, most of what I do though is I tour around the country and I get to guest star in um, drag shows in gay venues all around the country where they usually have three or four queens who perform there regularly uh, and I get to kind of be a, like a guest star and come in and do a couple numbers which is so fun because we get to all hang out backstage and yeah. I love meeting queens from all over the world. It's one of my favorite things to do. And they probably love meeting you because you know, you, you're you you're probably at that level everyone wants to get at. Uh, yeah, I mean, I will say I've had amazing experiences with every drag queen I've met. Sure. Um, I've heard that some of my peers who tour maybe aren't as beloved around the world. Hey. Uh, in terms of, I, I say this, because when I go into someone else's space, someone else's bar, yeah. especially, you know, not at any time, but definitely in a city where I don't live, it's like, I'm a guest in that space. And sure. I want to like, you know, say hi to all the queens that are there. So is, is, Queens, is Queens what you call the Fellow, drag performers when yeah. they're not? Okay. Well, yeah, Queens, drag performers, yeah. I'll, you know, some of them, not just drag kings and stuff too, but oh, okay. I kind of just queens in general. Que oh, I see. Okay. All right. Queens in general, you know, I want to say hi Excuse to all my ignorance. I don't know. I'm, I'm learning. Or some of those, say hi to all the girls, you know. Say hi to What's up, ladies? There. Yeah. All right. Um, and, you know, make it, make sure that, like, we're all going to have a great night. You yeah. Know? And I and definitely want everyone to feel like I'm part of their 
for show, not kind of totally like, that I'm imposing. on And them. so your show is you sing live, right? I sing live. You don't you I don't lip sync. Oh, you do both. Okay. I do it all. I don't juggle. No, that's all right. I barely do now either, by the way. Really? Yeah. Mostly just straight stand up. Is it like riding up. a bike though? Yeah, I can still do it. Like sometimes I'll pick up like some produce at the grocery store because I threw out a bunch of my juggling props. And I'm like, oh, I can still do it. Just like, okay, just so I know, if, if comedy doesn't go my way, yeah. I could always just uh, go back to juggling shows, do I you, suppose. Do you tell jokes while you juggle ever? Yeah, yeah, all the time. Well, th there you go. Yeah, I try to do, yeah, I try to combine two things into one. Yeah, it's like, what do you call the man with three balls? Marcus Monroe. There you go. Hey, we're doing comedy, kind of. See, it's comedy, kind of. Um, so, but like, how did you come up with the name? Jackie Cox. It's so funny, I didn't actually come up with it. My friend Blake in college came up with it. He created it as like this character. It's based off of a real person um, who was a bit of a diva that we went to school with in LA. And when I was coming up with a drag name, I was like, oh, Jackie Cox. It's kind of like a funny name. I like that it's like a lot of consonants. Yeah. Because my name, Darius Rose, has the, the softness of the R's and all you that You have such stuff. a beautiful Thank regular you. name, too, though. But no one ever says it right or. Darius, 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 Rhodes, Darius, Rhodes. Darius. People hear Rhodes, like a Rhodes scholar. Ah. So I was like, I want a name that's like a lot of, a lot of hard k k sounds. Yeah. So I, I like Jackie Cox. Yeah. And then later people were like, oh wait, is this supposed to be like a, like a double entendre? And I was like, oh, it wasn't, but I guess it is. Like Jackie. It would yeah. be more like Jackie and Cox. Yeah. I, and that's not for me. But like, no, no. you know, if your mind goes there. All right. All right. I, I look. I mean, I am a sex positive queen. There I'll you go. You that. I, think, I love that. I think we should be free to be, as adults, doing things that we want with consent. How about that? Hey, yeah. consent, that is a good thing. I yeah. don't think anyone can deny that. Consent is always great. Well, I'm, I'm glad to know that there's a, a, lot of, a lot more straight guys that do drag than I thought. I don't know if uh, there's a lot more, but there are no, some. No, there's a lot more than I thought. Yeah, which was zero. Yeah, I thought it was like, you're gonna, you're gonna be like, no. But no. It, it makes sense though, it makes sense. Cause it's, uh, you know, the, the, it's an inclusive thing. now. Um, how did you decide, and how important is it for you to put your Persian heritage into your drag persona? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, it re originally wasn't really part of my drag persona, not because I didn't like, it wasn't like a conscious thing. I just like didn't think anyone would care or like identify with it or want that to be part of what they saw from me. Okay. And then it wasn't until like, 2016 and the election and then, you know, Trump's like first, one of his first acts in office was to create that ban of people visiting from Muslim majority countries. Right. And I just kind of was like, this is horrible. Yeah. And I was like, I wanted to speak up. So I started like speaking up about it. And you know, my drag platforms have always been bigger than my non-drag, you know? So I had mm -hmm. like more followers as Jackie, more people like paying, paying attention to me, listen to me. So I wanted to like, talk about that kind of stuff yeah. and incorporate that into my drag more. So I created a whole cabaret show called I Dream of Jackie, which starred me as this like genie character who like awakes um, or, or is let out of her genie bottle after being under, you know, buried for a hundred years and is like shocked at what she sees in the world ah, and kind of cool. learns about the world. That's a fun narrative. I like yeah. that. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a, um, a, like a, the cabaret show that kind of made me, it actually it's the show that got the attention of the Drag Race producers. Uh -huh. So one of the casting directors came to see that show when I did it in LA and they talked to the producers and I think the rest is history. So you didn't even really apply to get on RuPaul's no, I Drag did. Race? No, I did. I still had to like submit a tape and whatever. And this was now, yeah. So I'd been doing that show for a couple years and then and I did like sequels to it or whatever. And I took it out to LA and then, yeah, and I had submitted, I had submitted a tape, like an audition tape. Uh -huh. And then one of the casting directors who saw my tape saw that I was going to be in LA and came to my show. And then uh, the rest is history. That's awesome. Was it one of your goals to get on RuPaul's Drag Race? Not at all. It was never kind of in the front of my mind. I really? had it like, yeah, I, my, I was helping a friend with uh, their audition tape. And I was like, wait, this doesn't seem so hard. And so I kind of submitted a tape like on a whim. Ah, did your friend get it? No. But you did? I did. Ugh. It's okay. Yeah, that's fun. I'm sure they were supportive of you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. So were you doing full-time 
drag shows when you submitted for it? No, I was still working in the corporate world. At Gap? I left Gap. Oh, you left Gap. Okay. I worked for uh, Ross Dress for Less. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Ross Dress for Less. Uh, and they, their offices were in Midtown. Okay. Um, and I was, so I would do those shows and then do shows kind of like right around this area here in yeah. Hell's Kitchen after work. Um, and I was kind of doing it all at, the, at once. Wow. That is, that is a lot. The light keeps changing. It was sunny and now it's yeah. dark. I don't know what, it doesn't know what it is. Doesn't know what it is. So you you call yourself the uh, the Persian princess of drag. It's true. I'm a little old to be a princess, but I guess, you know what? No, nah, you can be a princess. You can be a princess at any age. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, there's no, you know, let's not be, uh, what do you call it, ageist? Ageist. Yeah. Yeah, let's not be self-ageist. Yeah. Yeah, I like them older. Yeah, Persian princess of drag. I just like, I like, well, I like the alliteration, you know. Persian princess, I like that. And then, you know, and I think I am. I, no one else is, so it's me. How important is it for you to um, to, to put like a comedy into your act? Like how important is comedy in, in your drag, drag performances? Yeah, I think it's like, I think I'm best at like situational comedy. So like, uh, I'm, I I do like, I feel like my jokes that like I write are always like a little like meh, meh, like sure. bad jokes. Yeah. But I, I do like to just kind of like comment on like the world around us. And I think I have a, Whoopi Goldberg on RuPaul's Drag Race gave me this advice. Okay. She said, you're already kind of a funny person. So just like be honest and tell the truth. And I'm going to already laugh because I think you're funny. Oh. So you I... don't have to like write jokes because I think what she's trying to tell me is I'm not the best at writing jokes. Okay. So, you know, she's like, you're funny enough. Your, like, stream of consciousness already is just kind of yeah, silly. Yeah, and, like, kind of like the way I talk or whatever. I have, like, a, I guess. A, you're a funny guy. Funny cadence, funny enough. Yeah. You know? You know? Yeah. So, that... uh, yeah, I guess so. It's not, I mean, I, 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 I always want my sense of humor to come through in my drag, but uh -huh. I'm not expecting it to be, like, you know, like, Bianca Del Rio, who is an amazing drag queen, is, like, a stand-up comedian. Okay. And that's, like, her shtick. Is she one of your influences for like totally. comedy yeah. and drag? I mean, Bianca was hosting huge shows here in New York City when I first moved here. Uh, and I love her aesthetic. Yeah, so for sure she was like an influence on me. I think of like Jinx Monsoon, who won season five of Drag Race, big influence. Benda La Creme. Oh, she's in Chicago. Jinx. Jinx was in, was in, would, yeah, Jinx just finished her run in Chicago. Now, would you ever do a Broadway show like sure. that? Sure. Who's yeah. casting? Put it out there. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that would be fun. I'd, I'd, I'd see you in any Broadway show. Aw, you're sweet. Yeah, you'd be great at that, though. Yeah, you know, I uh, I love the stage, and I've gotten to do a couple musicals. I just did, uh, last year, I did two musicals. I did uh, Grease, the musical. Whoa, where was that? Uh, in LA. Who did you play? I was um, Miss Lynch, the teacher. Oh, hilarious. Did you, so also, you did it in drag? I did it in drag, and wow. also the Teen Angel. Who, oh, um, that's cool. Who, uh, you know, visits Frenchie and her Go back dream. to high school. Right yeah, but I now. did it in full drag. Oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, just like heightened drag character. It was really cool. That and then cool. after after that, I did um, a new musical called Drag the Musical. Which, that was in LA too? That was in LA as well. So yeah, so LA is ready for my musical talent. I just got to get New York on board. You know? Yeah, I get that. But New York is, you know, the, the, the top of the top. Yeah. So I just gotta work my way up. I did my one man show right here at Ars Nova. Oh yeah, that's a great cool venue. Yeah, that's where yeah. I started it and then it went to the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. I gotta I gotta see it. Yeah, you gotta When are you bringing it back? Uh it's dead. When are you writing the new one? Uh, oh yeah, I'll, I'll work, I'm working on a new one. Now have you ever thought about working on a one man show? I was talking to Trevor from the Van O Town on Talkie Walkie. And he's he's writing a one man show about his life. Would you ever do that? I mean, yeah, your, your, your cabaret shows are essentially. A yeah, one I guess I haven't done like an autobiographical one, but right. I, I have done like kind of one person shows. Yeah, um, just not not as much biographical. But um, in the one woman show challenge on my season of Drag Race that will be coached, I did a season twelve. Yeah, season twelve. Um, now available on Paramount Plus. Oh, is that right? It is. It is. Shout out to my friends at Paramount Plus. Um, it's uh, we had to do a one-win show challenge, and that's where Opie was like, "Just tell me the truth. Like, don't don't yeah. try to be funny." And I was like, "Okay," and I did. You know, whenever people are starting to write jokes and they're new to comedy, yeah, they don't know what to talk about. I'm always like, "Just write about you." Yeah. Because first of all, no one can steal jokes about you. No one has your same life experience. So that's that, true. That's, that's the advice I also give to uh, comics who are just starting out. Up and comers. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's. I mean, I think it's important to just write about yourself. You also, and correct me if I'm wrong, but 
when you're talking about yourself, you learn a little bit about yourself too in the sure. process. So that's yeah. that's always a good thing. Yeah, a little self therapy. Yeah, a little self talk, little self therapy. Doesn't hurt. Yeah. yeah, we could always use a little reflection. All right, reflection. where are we walking to now? We are on 55th on 10th going up. Yeah, a I hill. think we'll go a little up too aggressive. Uh, oh, okay, for your old knees. No, I'm all right. I'm all right. We'll turn right up here. I think we're the same your... age. Don't be calling my knees old. Well, yeah, maybe I got mine replaced. All right. Uh, you uh, you can turn. We can we'll turn right up here on 57. All right, I love it. And we'll come back down. Uh, on the main drag of health. Picture. Oh yeah. Now, are you going to get recognized? Do you think? Uh, I mean, I may, but unless there are tourists, they probably won't say anything. Gotcha. Because gotcha. I think New Yorkers are like. New Yorkers also, I've noticed, will recognize you and then just keep walking. And then keep walking. Like I've I've had a few times where I'm around the comedy clubs and I'll be hanging outside and someone will walk by me and just go Marcus Monroe and then just keep walking. Whoa. I'm like, is there any? Do you want to add to that, or are we just gonna? They just wanted to say your name. I guess so. It's a fun name to say. Yeah, it was. It wasn't like the cops coming to look for you, was it? No, no. I hope not. That's good. That's no. good. What is a normal day for you? Because I don't talking to you. Uh, it doesn't seem like one day. Uh, like there's no. Two there's no days. schedule. Yeah. yeah, there's no real schedule. Um, it, it can like literally, I can be doing nothing for like a whole week, and yeah. I have nothing to do. Or it's like this week, I'm doing this with you. Yeah. In the morning, I've shot um, some scenes for this new series I'm doing. It's called The Struggle. Woo! Check it out. Uh, Instagram is at What's The Struggle. Okay. Um, a new uh, short web series. I don't know if it's going to be a web series. I don't know where it's going to be. Okay. But it's going to be a new series about three roommates living in New York, living their lives. And, uh, and then tonight, I'm doing something as well. So you never know. What your day will bring. Do you like the that, that seems that do you like the busyness of the day like that, or do you like a week where you have nothing? I like being busy. I do too. I like being busy. Yeah. I like. Uh, uh, I get antsy if I'm home for too long without. Yeah. A flight to get on or a train. I'm like ah. Yeah. And I actually find, like, once, I find travel to be like relatively stress-free and it's really very stressed about traveling and getting to the airport and checking in and I've done it now so much that I kind of know like what's going on yeah and like I've only ever missed like a couple flights oh, that's good but they're only for places that like I know like there's another flight like in an hour like, okay I definitely missed a couple flights to LA but oh no I'm like oh there'll be another one in an hour yeah yeah I I don't think I've ever missed a flight because I got to the airport too late yeah, I mean, for me, it's, like, it's been like a minute, because sometimes at JFK, if it's really busy, they're like, oh, yeah. nope, you got to be there at least an hour before, and I'm like, dang it. Yeah, no, I like the new LaGuardia. The new LaGuardia is great. Unfortunately, it does not fly all the way to California. There's a, uh, I think JetBlue flight, yeah, there, there's no flights to LAX, though, right? no direct flights. No direct flights. It's um, That's too bad. So when, here's a little history for you. I want some history. When they were building JFK... They were like, how are we going to get people all the way out here? Because yeah. everyone, LaGuardia is much closer to the city. True. So they made a mile limitation. So LaGuardia flights can only go a certain amount of miles out of the city. Ah. So I believe it's like 1,500 miles, maybe 2,000. But LA is like 2,500 wow. miles or so. That's annoying. So yeah, so there's no flights that can go from LaGuardia to California for now. I think Delta is one of the companies that's trying to get the Port Authority to expand the rules. We don't like Delta. We don't? No. Oh, okay. They're, they're trying to get the, uh, the miles? No, we don't like them? No, fuck Delta. What did they do? They put me on the no-fly list. Wait, what did you do? I don't. I made a TikTok in one of their bathrooms they didn't like. I made the news. It was bad. It's a different, it's a, I'll tell you off camera. And then they put me on the no-fly list the next day after I posted it, Thanksgiving. So fuck Delta. But I they were my favorite airline. That's crazy. What would people be surprised to learn about you? Hmm. You know what? And maybe this is just in my head, but like, I think people probably perceived me to be like a pretty confident person. Yeah. And I think I am. Yeah. But I get nervous a lot more than I think people realize. You get nervous a lot. Wow. Yeah, not like in a huge way. Like before you go on stage or like before an appearance? Sometimes before that, sometimes before an appearance. Sometimes there's a Mormon missionary yeah. trying to live, trying to live his best life. Yeah. Um, 
You know, you can eat hay. Even in New York, maybe you'll find some more. Oh, there's another one on the corner here. Oh, look at this. So they come this in pairs, good. right? They got to keep the eye on each Two by two, other. we're going door to door. Yeah. Yeah, we didn't pay for the rights to that either, but... <laughs> That's all right. Yeah. I do like the floral tie. Very cute. Yeah, it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, you just made his day. You know, these, these boys got to do their thing to each their own. Uh-huh. Love it. Now we're walking down 9th Avenue, the main drag of of Hell's Kitchen, yeah. I say. It's a little busier than 10th Avenue. A little busier. But I, I like it. A few more bars, venues, locations. Do you have a favorite bar along in Hell's Kitchen you like to go grab a drink with your man? I do love a lot of great bars. Um, there's some really great new ones. Verse is a new great bar. We're okay. going to pass it in a little bit. The Dickens is really cute. And new. Ooh, I almost died. Ooh, careful. Um, the spot is right up here and they just... Uh, oh no, we have passed the spot already. Um, but... Uh, is vinyl still around? Vinyl's gone. Oh, I hate but it. Rise up here on the corner just expanded, and so now they have Rise, which is you see the sign right up there. Yeah, that's cool. And then they they made they, they took over this space right next door, and that space is called Shine. So ah, it's called Rise, rise and, and that's Shine. That's cute. Now, do you have people? I mean, you you're gonna be I know you and you're gonna be pretty humble here, but you, you got you know you're notable. You're pretty famous in the in the drag community. Sure. Do you have um people besides me reaching out to you from your past <laughs> wanting things from you oh like like from like like high school days high school grade school just being like Darius what is I saw you on TV what's up what's going on uh, people will message me very sweet things and they'll say like um, you know like oh my god I just realized like that it's you or whatever like because that's the thing I mean you know most people know me as Jackie Cox and people from my life especially in high school, so yeah. know me as Darius. Yeah. So they don't like quite associate the names together. Sure. Right away. Yeah. I also have people who like realize it like after they've already like become a fan of me. Like, wait a minute, I know who you are. Oh, uh, um, okay. Well, that, that looks like an accident. Oh, shit. <laughs> and I'll... Oh, no. Sometimes I'll just Google people I went to school what with. What happened? Oh, no. Oh, snap. Ooh, that's not, that's not good. There's no one in the other car, so I think they're okay. I hope so. That does not look good. But we should also get out of the street. I yeah, don't want to tempt that. fate. Yeah. <laughs> My health insurance is no bueno. Yeah. They can't really do much if you've been crashed into by a semi. Is know? that true? I mean, I don't know. What are they gonna, I mean, you're, I'm assuming you're crushed. Oh yeah. We're, we're not in a car. There is a, we're on, what are we on? Ninth and, we're on ninth. and 51st. There is like a, I like the, the energy in Hell's Kitchen. <laughs> yeah, everyone's kind of like, people are like working, but also having fun. You yeah. Know, it's kind yeah. of all of it at once. Yeah. Do you, um. So they take them? Who's working over here? Oh, I know these boys. Tim. She does. This guy, he knows everybody. Hi, babe. I love this. You know everyone. Tim, in addition to being a very muscular man and bartender, is also a amazing real estate agent. Wow, there you go. So if you're looking for a new place to live in New York, mm -hmm. hit up Tim Kava. There you go. I like it. Do, do, you, um, do you have a favorite NSYNC song? Favorite NSYNC song? Yeah. I mean, the one that I like... At the time, like I love Dirty Pop. Oh yeah, love Dirty Pop. Yeah. Um. Uh. What are my other fave, fave, faves? I knew them all once. I mean, probably if you played them, I'd sing any of them. Sure, sure. Um. I mean, obviously we love Bye Bye Bye. Yeah. Uh. To the classics. The classic. Tearing up my heart. Tearing up my heart. Great one. Such a banger. Such a banger. Uh. Yeah, uh, the ballad wise, that. Um, gone. Yeah, gone. Gone. Oh, that's, a, that's just a JT song, or is that all the No, voice? it was, well, it could have been just a JT song, but it was on um, the Celebrity album. I think it was like track six or something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Just Got Paid. That is a good one. Now, what are you listening to in music wise these days? Oh, God. Um,. We've been listening. My, my partner's a big Taylor Swift person. Oh, are you going to see her at MetLife? No, he doesn't want like the big Ven, like the big arena kind oh, of thing. Oh, okay. All right. But, but he's a big Swifty. Yeah. Like I if like you ever Taylor did Swift. like a multi, like theater 
dates thing. The problem mm -hmm. is like the Swifties would all buy them. Like, sure. Right away. He's not like that aggressive enough at the Got it. online purchasing. Yeah, I but he's basically so he lives a lot of Taylor Swift at home. He also loves Sierra Bareilles. He basically loves like, like, white girl music. And then whenever I'm like, I always listen to songs that I have to perform. So that's always like what's running through my head. Oh, that's good. Or I listen to a lot of musicals. Oh yeah. Know? Like six, that's a really listenable album. I haven't li I haven't heard any of that music yet. Should we cross? What yeah, should we let's do? do it. Is your partner's name Michael? Is that his it? name's Casey. Casey. Yeah, I mean, he is, his schedule is crazy. So he's like a celebrity makeup artist. Wow. So he's always up really early because they got some early call times. Oh, I'm sure. He did, he was at 6 a.m. every day this week. Wow. Poor well, babe. He's working. He's working. He's working. He just, yeah. I, he's he's like, and he inspires me. Yeah. You that's know? so cute. Yeah. And you guys have been together for uh, 12 years, you said, right? It'll be 12 years, I think, this summer. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Since 2011. So, yeah. 12 years. That's incredible. Wild. Truly wild times. Um, yeah, he's great. We've grown up together, you know? Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. I mean, when you, when you meet someone that in your 20s and you are still with them in your 30s, that's like... Uh, what do you call it? Like prominent years? What do you call it? What's the word? I'm Formative. For? Formative. That's it. I'm, yeah. I'm not good at talking, so I shouldn't even be doing a, a podcast with the word talk in it. I say, you know, get 1% better each time. There you go. That's all you I need. I like that. I like that. That's all you need. I like that. <laughs> I'll see there are so many cute couples walking down the street. It's a beautiful day. I mean, we got the sun's out. The guns are out. Yeah, a lot of, lot of muscles here. A lot of muscles. We got skinny arms, eh? I do. I mean, you have bigger arms than I do. Really? I, yeah, I can't. I think I got a tighter shirt than you do. I go to the, oh, yeah, this shirt, I think it's baggy on purpose. But I, I <laughs> my wife just got me this the other day. She buys me clothes. Oh, She's like, hey, cute. wear this, wear this. There's all these uh, drag laws being passed now, banning drag shows. Horrible. It's, it seems like... They're saying, you know, we live in a free country, but then you're, 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 you're banning performance art. It's like, what are you doing, man? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's literally the laws they used to have in the 60s that are part of what caused the Stonewall riots, you know? I mean, it used to be in New York, you know, in the 60s and before that, of yeah. course, ah. that you had to have at least four or maybe five items of clothing that belong to your gender, and I put that in quotes, on you, like wow. wearing them at all times. Wow. Um, so, like, like, I believe, and we can fact check this later if we want, but like, if you were in drag at a gay bar, you would have to have like men's underwear and men's socks and men's shoes on and like a blazer. You know what I mean? You had to like have enough men's clothing on. Yeah. And it's like, think how crazy that sounds. Yeah. And literally, we started a whole gay rights movement over 50 years ago to yeah. like end those laws and for those kinds of laws to be coming back. And, you know, they're using drag queens as kind of cudgels against all of the queer community, but especially, uh, you know, the, the trans community and my trans siblings who, right. you know, because, because their limited definition of gender and sex is very outdated, mm -hmm. you know, the, the real people who are going to be suffering here not me, you know, who can take off my drag and walk around and, I guess... Just be Darius. Or, yeah, if I have to for safety. It's, right. it's my trans sisters especially who right. will be... They'll use this law to say, you can't wear that in public. Like, like you know, like, if you're a trans woman walking down the street in a dress, you could be arrested in certain cities now. That is ridiculous in certain to me. States. And these are the states claiming to be the freest states in, right. the, in, you know, the, in the country. It's, yeah, it's, it's that whole thing of, you know, small government unless we don't like you and then we want to control everything. No, I think, I think parents who want their kids to see drag will take them to see drag. Um, there are some drag shows and drag, like drag story hours that are designed for children. Mm -hmm. And I think most of those are very kid appropriate. I've done a drag queen story hour. I read... I think like the Hungry Caterpillar, like, you know, or whatever. Like, if I saw you as Jackie Cox reading the Hungry Caterpillar to me as a child, I'd probably read a lot more to this day. See? You're like, how, how fun is reading? Yeah. Yeah. Wear, wear a kooky outfit and read stories. Yeah. Um, and then, you know. How's some, that any different some, than a clown? 
It's like the performing same thing. at a birthday party. Same right? thing. Are you hire Spider Man or Cinderella? Or Spider Man, yeah, exactly. Kids party. It's just a, it's just a costume. Or yeah, it's a costume. That's what I'm saying. You yeah. know, it's a costume. You know, and if parents bring their kids to a, like a drag brunch, a lot of drag brunches happen in restaurants. Sure. And that's the parents' choice. You know, drag brunches are often advertised as like a, a boozy, you know, event. And if there are there's more adult-oriented material, that's on the parents. It's yeah. not really on the performers. Yeah, you're just doing your job. You know and I mean? it happens like, to be kids. Just like there have been parents who bring their kids to bars all the time. You know? Yeah, I, comedy I, shows. Yeah. Yeah, or, yeah. you see parents bring their kids to comedy shows. Like, uh, It's like people should have the right to raise their kids however they want. Exactly. And by the same token, like... I don't think anyone has ever forced a kid to a drag queen story hour. No. That's ridiculous. That's not a thing. No, definitely not a thing. You know, so I think it's all just smoke and mirrors, and they're trying to create an enemy out of us to distract from all the other problems that are really going on. Yes. Is my opinion. Well, I love it. That's a good opinion. We just need more love in this world, man. Yeah, literally, I'm just, I'm just, there's no greater motive you know people keep saying people throw that word groomer around groomer is oh, designed yeah. for is a word that is specifically referring to mostly straight men most of the people who've you know unfortunately are actually doing that to kids are not drag queens right you know and and it's referring to when you you know privately entrap a child into horrible things that's not what drag queen story hour is no it's a it's a it's a public event where kids can watch drag queens and make their own opinions. There you go. And if people are scared that their child may become a drag queen, well, they should be because it doesn't pay a lot. Mm -hmm. But that's the only reason. <laughs> you you, I mean? you seem to be doing pretty good. Yeah, but, sure. But I understand. Sure. I understand. I mean, it's, it's like you should be equally afraid of your child becoming a juggler or a drag queen. <laughs> yes, yeah. I, I would agree with that yeah. 100%. Are you grooming kids with your juggling act? I, I, no. I don't think I am. I no, don't think I not. have. You're not. That's the, the moral of the story is you're not. No, I'm not. You know? It's like you're performing... I probably should have answered that with a hard no quicker than I did. Yeah, well, you're not. It's no, a no. No, I'm not. It's a no. no I'm none of us are doing no. that. No. 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 The answer is no. Have you ever been... Have you ever, like, met a protester at a show? Like, have you ever been doing a show and someone stands up and goes, This ain't right! This um, ain't right! I have not, but some of my um, drag sisters have. Um, I, so far, have been lucky. I have done all ages performances, but... Luckily, most of them were before all of this latest round of stuff started. Uh -huh. I haven't, I mean, but Pride Month is coming up and I know there's gonna be events that are all ages and I am nervous. You know, yeah. I'll be doing Pride in Columbus, Ohio, Pride in a couple of different places. So. Are you doing anything in the city? Hi, babe, how are you? Um, I will be doing a couple you know everybody. in the city. This is incredible. That's my neighborhood, oh, you, okay. know. Oh, yeah. you know. I walk around the Upper East Side, I don't know anybody. Well, you gotta make friends with your neighbors. I know, I try. A lot, of, a lot of rich ladies up there. Yeah. I'm going to be gone a lot this summer, but if you're in New York, I will be doing Tuesday um, nights at the uh, Ice Palace in Fire Island. Oh, that's fun. I've never been to Fire Island. It's pretty fun. I mean, it takes a minute to get there. You got to take like a train to a bus, to a ferry, to the island. The beauty of New York. I love this city, man. I don't think I could live anywhere else. You've been here a long time. Yeah, 19 years in August. How are... Oh my gosh, thank you. So amazing. They're very sweet. What's your name? I'm Kai. Kai, Jackie, nice, nice to meet you. you. What does it say? Lucky me, I see ghosts. Okay, this is actually a Kanye West sweatshirt. It's vintage, it's vintage. I okay. I wouldn't have known that. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. That's cool. And work the shorts too. Are you visiting? Yeah, we're visiting. Cheers. Have an amazing time. Bye, have fun. See, I told you, tourists. I love it. I love they it. always the tourists say hi. Are you so used to that 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 doesn't phase you anymore? It definitely doesn't phase me. Um, I, I think it is cool. Like, it's cool that people are like, it's cool that people like care about me or like or, or connected to my art. You know, sure. That's kind of how I see it is like cool. Like, you know, like what I'm doing meant something to someone. You yeah. Because it's 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 more it's validating. You, it's also like why you do it. You sure. Know? I, I'm not doing drag, you know, not for an audience. <laughs> right, right. So that is, that, it is nice when people say hi. Yeah. Um, and I, I've been very lucky. No one's ever, at least in person, I get some weird DMs sometimes, and no one in person has ever said anything mean to me. People are very sweet. So I feel very lucky about that. That's so cool. I was so happy that would happen, and I'm so glad it did. <laughs>
Yeah, I told you though. They literally had the suitcases in their hand. It was like it's like. So it's usually it's mostly people that are in transit. No, not in transit. But I'm saying like you know it's mostly <laughs> tourists. Like New okay. Yorkers are like we're too cool. Ah uh, yeah, yeah yeah yeah. My thing is whenever I see someone famous, I just pretend that we've met before. I'm like, oh hey, what's up? How you been, man? It's been a while. I haven't seen you since blah blah blah. You lie? Yeah, a little bit. It helps break the ice because then they're like, oh sure. yeah, kind of puts me on the same level. Like if it's like um. That only works if it's someone like a, a comic that I really like, or like. Oh sure. It only works with someone in my field, but if it was like, like, like uh, Seth Rogen or yeah. something. Celine Dion. Celine Dion. I wouldn't be like, oh, we've actually met before at the Canadian Singer Institute or something. I wouldn't. She'd be like, well, can you sing for me right now? Can you sing? What? Yeah. What's one thing about drag that would surprise most people to learn? Um. Uh, people, I think, kind of know this, but you don't really know until you've done it, is how uncomfortable it is. Mm. Like, it is uncomfortable. The makeup. The makeup is hot. The, you're wearing a corset or some kind of shapewear. It's, it's, you're wearing multiple pair, pairs of tights. The clothes, the, the, the rhinestones and the sequins will scratch you. The hair is heavy and weighs a lot. And you have pins sticking in your head. And then you're in heels, and so your feet are like this. It is so uncomfortable. Like, and like, I think people like think they know, but then they're like, oh yeah, we'll just have these drag queens standing on their feet for this shoot Dude, for eight hours. I didn't even realize you're in heels for oh, that. Oh yeah. Oh, can you do, um, what do you call it? Like the... A death drop? Yes, do you do that? No. Those, I'm like, you're gonna kill yourself, right? Yeah. If you've never seen a death drop, you like stand like this and your legs split down or something. Yeah. It looks so unnatural. Some people call that a dip. I mean, it, it is different names, but I can't do any of it. All right. All right. But I mean, Insert video of someone doing it here. Yeah, yeah, I will, I will, because I think it's such a cool yeah. move, but it does look uh, very hard to do. Yeah, and I mean, there are people my age who can do it. Uh, I don't know, They're not not these old bones. So would you say the hardest part, uh, pardon me, the hardest part about about drag is is the outfit and and walking the, the walking in the heels, the wigs, just like that's probably the most like the the the, the thing that like like gets to you, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, but it is, it is also hard to like keep your drag fun and fresh and keep, you know, you want to keep finding the joy in it. So yeah. It is, I think drag works best when you're having fun. And so I'm, it's not hard, but it is something I'm always conscious of. It's like, what of the drag brings me joy and what am I, you know, what, what is, why do I do this? And how long do you think you want to keep doing it for? I, I don't think like far out like that. I'm oh, not no? that kind of person. Okay. I'm kind of like, this is what I'm doing right now, and I'm loving it, yeah. and I'll do it until I stop loving it. Maybe one day you'll be back at the Gap. Maybe. May maybe, never know, right? Yeah, you honestly never know. There's no there's no shame in that. No, 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 I'm not saying, Honest job. No, absolutely, I'm just saying, I think, you know, you, you did it, you've done it, maybe. I did it. Yeah. Always go back. What yeah. about you, back to the juggling tours? Um, I always thought, like, after I record my stand-up special, uh -huh. and I tour that, while I'm writing, my next hour, it could be fun to tour with the juggling show so I can still tour. Yeah. Because no one, uh, a lot of my comedy fans don't even know I juggle. So it could be fun to be like, oh, I can also do this thing and, and do a show like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, you never know. I mean, like, like you said, never say never. Uh, my main thing right now is just getting people to come out to the shows. So if they come out to the shows, Maybe I'll even juggle at the show. I don't know. Yeah. I've, I've, I, you got to uh, do that around the world number. With yeah. the light up balls. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we ever do a show together, I'll do that. Yeah. That would be fun. That's what the kids will want. That was our talk. Our talkie walkie with Jackie Cox. Where can people find you at, Jackie? Um, at Jackie Cox NYC. So I guess I can't move. Yeah, you um, can never. You're, I can't you're never stuck move. here. But yeah, at Jackie Cox NYC on... Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, if anyone still uses that. Uh, Facebook, if anyone still uses that. Yeah, talkie walkie.